It's hundreds of miles long and has plenty of good locations to show off trains. Join us as we travel along the Delaware River. We will travel south from Port Jervis, New York to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. An Erie E8 along with a former Delaware and Hudson Alco RS3 are on display near a very old turntable. The passenger station hosts a three-car train with a PL42AC and a Jeep for power. Both were built by EMD. This line is jointly operated by New Jersey Transit and Metro North. The tracks and equipment are owned by NJT, but they are operated by Metro North crews. We get one last look at the venerable Erie Diesel before leaving Port Jervis. Norfolk Southern, number 2726, is the only diesel required to pull this westbound auto rack train. All of the cars are empty as the SD70M-2 travels through Phillipsburg, New Jersey. We take a quick look at some classic equipment before spotting the next train. A Dash 940C is seen leading intermodal to 12. These engines are sometimes nicknamed top hats because of their standard cabs. They were retired in 2018. A dirt bike keeps us occupied while waiting for more action from Norfolk Southern. The next train traveling through Phillipsburg has a Union Pacific locomotive. On the Main Street Bridge, we spot a Dash 9 and a GP38-2. The 5617 is a former Southern locomotive, 
built by EMD in 1970. It was first constructed as a GP38 and rebuilt in 2005 as a GP38-2. An ES-44 AC slowly enters Phillipsburg with a mix of freight cars. Hoppers from the CNW and Southern still display their fallen flag logos. Two more Jeeps and a road slug travel over the former Jersey Central Bridge with H-76, a local that originated from Allentown. Easton, which is just across the Delaware River from Phillipsburg, has a park that allows people to view the numerous trains traveling over the Delaware River. A trio of diesels enter Pennsylvania with an intermodal. Normally, three engines are all that's needed for NS freights, but the next train is a fourth engine. An ES 44 DC leads the train with an SD 70 ACU, a Dash 8, and a Dash 9. All of Norfolk Southern's Dash 8s at this time were former Conroe units with wide cabs. Another Dash 8 acquired from Conrail leads another intermodal with an SD-70 and the Penn Central Heritage Unit.
center beam is seen on the other side of the river. It's July 2017. The Belvedere and Delaware excursion line which runs under Norfolk Southern is running two trains. SW 1200 and number 1202 arrives with one of those trains. A special guest is on the other side of the train. It's Thomas the Tank Engine. Garbage train 63V is on the bridge that goes over the Beldell excursion line and the Delaware River. Another train has arrived. It's being pushed by Susquehanna 142, a Chinese Mikado built in 1989. The two bi-levels coupled up to the locomotive were acquired from Metra. We get another view of the beautiful 282 with another excursion. There are no bi-levels for this one. The whistle is a Southern Pacific six chime. Number 142 is seen again in the town called Carpentersville. The line runs south to Milford, but the section that runs south from Carpentersville to Milford was abandoned in 2001. Since 2016, the Beldell made attempts to reopen the Milford section of their line to give their excursion trains longer runs out of Phillipsburg. To promote the railroad's efforts and to try and get more donations, the line ran caboose excursions with a 44-ton switcher. The switcher and cabooses are light enough to run on the abandoned section of track, unlike the rest of the Beldell's equipment.
It is. A caboose is seen with Chesapeake and Ohio paint, while a Conrail flat car still has faded Penzi lettering and Penn Central numbering. Another excursion line that runs near the Delaware River is the New Hope and Ivy Land. The station in New Hope is the only part of the NH&I that's actually near the Delaware River. The car excursion has a General Electric C30-7 for power. NH&I also has a steam engine of their own, but it wasn't running when this was filmed in 2015. Further south is West Trenton. The Trenton subdivision hosts a number of CSX freights, while the parallel West Trenton line is operated by SEPTA. A high rail arrives from Pennsylvania as it slowly travels on the CSX line. It is followed by a backhoe of train wheels. A pair of Silverliner 4s get prepared for a trip on the former Reading line.
After the passenger train leaves the station, an international goes backwards. SEPTA Silverliner 5s have finished a run from Philadelphia and will spend some time in a siding while the crew prepares for another trip out of West Trenton. Two automobiles owned by CSX quickly slip past the station. One is a Suburban, while another is a Silverado. The Silverliner 5s returned to the platform to pick up more passengers heading into Pennsylvania. A trio of Silverliner 4s provide more passenger action. The weather is warmer on another day of train watching in West Trenton. A westbound freight with only eight cars is behind two diesels from General Electric.
Next, the SEPTA passenger train completes its trip from Philadelphia. Half an hour later, it starts another trip, heading back towards the city. A CSX Intermodal has only one engine at the front. The second engine is in the middle of the consist. A light engine move follows the intermodal. These units were seen earlier with the short eight car train and will make a third appearance with another train leaving New Jersey. Meanwhile, a SEPTA passenger train makes its presence with five self-propelled passenger cars. Lambert Boyd used to have a hobby shop. I didn't know that. That was many, quite a few years ago. J.B. J.B. Collins. Never heard of him. I think on, on a bridge, the bridge where the bridge was. I picked up uh, the bridges. So not far away from New Hope and Ivy. I hate New Hope and Ivy. Why? <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> they went downhill. They, that's why I'm here. Yeah, they just they suck. Do I know? Oh, you're filming. I'll stop. My bad. He just doesn't, he doesn't like rail fans. I mean, now mind you, you're in a locomotive. You have all this noise going on and all that. Yeah. Okay. The stainless steel cars return to pick up passengers, while CSX numbers 985 and 3472 go back into Pennsylvania with a mix of freight cars. One of the hoppers still has the Chicago Northwestern logo. The SEPTA passenger train has to wait for all the freight cars to pass before departing West Trenton. This is a safety precaution to prevent the two trains from hitting each other in case there is a derailment. Leave West Trenton to head across the Delaware into Yardley. This is a beautiful town where the SEPTA line changes from single track to double track. A SEPTA passenger train arrives to make a station stop.
A push-pull intermodal appears with one engine at both ends of the freight. These diesels were built by General Electric in 2015. The next passenger train from SEPTA will be arriving 20 minutes late. Thankfully, CSX provides another freight for us to enjoy. The GP40-2 helping the newer GEVO is a former Baltimore and Ohio engine. The third engine is pushing the train. It's a CM44AC, a new rebuild that CSX created from the AC4400CW. Finally, the SEPTA train has arrived after being a third of an hour late. The coronavirus forced SEPTA to run one passenger train every two hours during the first three months of the pandemic. Now we are in Trenton, New Jersey's capital. This footage was filmed before the coronavirus pandemic in July 2019. We catch two trains on New Jersey Transit's light rail line that goes to Camden.
we take a look at the Northeast Corridor as an ACS-64 parallels Highway 1. This regional is heading north for Boston, Massachusetts. Amtrak has another northbound train going over the bridge. We are now on the bridge that goes over the tracks near Trenton Transit Center. The Acela passes through without stopping, but the next Amtrak train we see does stop. It's ACS 64 number 614 with the Silver Star. Another step to passenger train arrives as the Silver Star continues boarding. All the passengers are on the train and 614 is ready to take the Silver Star to its next station stop at Philadelphia's 30th Street Station. When it reaches Washington DC, number 614 will be taken off of the train and a pair of Genesis diesels will take the train to its final destination of Miami, Florida. Trenton Transit Center also has a station for the NJT light rails. An Amtrak maintenance vehicle checks the catenaries that leave Trenton Transit Center. We will now get on board the New Jersey Transit train. A 
bridge will carry us over the northeast corridor. We don't have a good view of the electrified main line, but we do see another train from New Jersey Transit. More light rails are spotted in storage, waiting to make their trip between Trenton and Camden. Trenton can still be seen from Mooresville, with the Delaware River acting as the state line. New Jersey Transit makes another appearance with a commuter train of bi-levels. The locomotive is an ALP 46. Amtrak crews can be seen near the main line. One of their high rails travels in reverse as another AOP 46 takes its train into the nearby NJT yards to get prepared for a run to New York City. This bridge still has the classic Amtrak logo, as another ALP 46 pulls a passenger train. The stabilizer for the camera lens has gone faulty as a four-car SEPTA train goes to Trenton. A little raft made of wood goes under the bridge, while another NJT commuter heads over the water. An ACS-64 goes over the bridge crossing the Delaware River. One half of the train is Amfleet's, 
while the other has view liners. A duck also travels under the bridge, while an ACS-64 pulls a Keystone train. The station in Bristol is also near the Delaware River, even though it can't be seen from the platform. Amtrak provides numerous trains for us to enjoy, including the Keystone train with a cab car leading. Amtrak no longer runs doubleheaders with their ACS 64s. These scenes were filmed on April 22, 2018. The next train is the Acela, then another ACS-64 travels south. A trio of Silverliner 5s make a station stop. Only passenger trains from SEPTA stop at this location. A year later in November, the action continues in Bristol. Two ACS-64s travel in the opposite direction with passenger trains made up of nine amphibes. Southbound Acela heads for Washington, D.C. Another ACS 64 is a nine car passing train, but only four M fleets. The other cars are view liners. Sometimes there's an advantage to having a passenger train running late, such as the case with these Silverliner 5s. They have a meet with a northbound Acela, but it doesn't end there.
Seconds after the Silverliner 5s leave the station, another SEPTA train appears and has a meet with an Amtrak Keystone train. We encounter two more passenger trains, one from Amtrak and one from SEPTA. Just across the Delaware River from Philadelphia is Pensalkin, New Jersey. The light rails running between Trenton and Camden make another appearance. Other NJT trains running to and from Atlantic City use a bridge to go over the light rails and cross the Delaware River to enter the city of brotherly love. We enjoy looking at some art on the windows. A K-4 Pacific is seen with one passenger car. K-4s were usually not streamlined, but during the late 1930s, the Pennsylvania Railroad tested two K-4s to see if streamlining made them faster. A passenger train is seen heading over the Delaware Bridge built by the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1895.
the three-car train is being pushed by a GP40PH-2B. Our journey comes to an end at the Eddystone Station in Philadelphia. After watching a fast ACS-64, a local on the nearby Conrail Shared Assets line has two Jeeps for power. One comes from CSX, and another is from Norfolk Southern. The train is gone, and another ACS-64 pulls the train south. Three more passion trains wrap up our program, but there will be three sequels in the future.
Yeah.